currently the guy on my train who's listening to shitty music without headphones on making the rest of the train suffer through his trash. Why do people play loud audio in public without headphones? My cousin. She stole her father's assets after he had a stroke by forging his signature on a bunch of title transfer documents. All of this was to steal her brother's share of the inheritance when their father died. Surprisingly, it was the IRS that proved she'd committed fraud and her brother finally got his share of the inheritance 10 years after their father died. Enjoy prison, Carrie. Nice. Eat shit, Carrie. Whoever invented spam texts. Man the dirty spam texts are getting out of hand. My 11-yo brother got a full sex ed class from some pics that were sent with an obviously phishing link. It's getting way out of hand. The person who started the, your car's warranty, spam calls. I get like 50 a day. Fuck that guy. One day I was bored and angry and started calling them back asking them. Where they were headquartered, they always said Orange County, California. The second I asked for a town they would hang up. I kept calling back demanding an answer. Must have called easily 80 to 90 times before they kept on auto hanging up on me. They haven't called back since. Marlon. You're not even a manager stop trying to tell me what to do. Edit. TYSM guys fuck all of your coworkers that are just like Marlon too. All my homies hate Marlon. OMG people who try to act like your manager when they work in the same position as you are the worst. We all get paid the same shitty amount Jessica. Don't try to act like you're my boss tears of joy. My boss. Fuck this guy's boss. My senior coordinator. I got assaulted. Robbed and followed home on the bus by a group of students in my school and he did nothing to help me, and blamed me. I hate him more than them. Fuck him. So like nobody did anything that sucks. Scammers who target old people or any vulnerable person. I used to get my nails done at a place run by a really, really nice Vietnamese family for whom English was, barely, their second language. I happened to go in and the owner said they got a call saying they hadn't paid their light bill. They were terrified their power was going to be turned off and were ready to buy the gift card some shady fuck told them would prevent that. I called the police on their behalf and I'm still pissed thinking about it. My elderly parents got a call from someone pretending to be me. They said they were in jail for drunk driving and needed bail money. Unfortunately this coincided with my vacation with my husband. So my parents thought I was in another state in jail. Instead of calling my husband, they got in the car, drove to the bank, withdrew $3,000 in cash and then went to Target to get the gift cards. Thankfully the Target employee insisted that my dad had to try calling me before they let the sale go through. I even had to text them a picture of myself to prove I wasn't in jail. Super thankful for the sharp thinking Target employee and not for the bank tellers who are literally trained to spot scams like this. Edit. A lot of you are on me about being upset with the bank teller. And I get that. I do. I was a teller supervisor who made sure my tellers were trained on elder abuse scams and what to spot so maybe I was more upset than I should be. $3,000 might not seem questionable to you, but if the elderly person standing in front of you never withdraws that much money in one go, then the teller should be asking a few questions. Obviously tellers cannot refuse someone their own money, but there are procedures in place to minimize the risk of elder abuse. Every single member of the Westboro Baptist Church. Pick one. Pick all of them. Agreed. These fuckers protested at my dad's funeral. Dr. Oz. I have patients that won't let me take x-rays that are extremely low dose radiation dose and could detect infection and cancer because Dr. Oz said dental x-rays cause cancer. Whoever stole my yellow dress out of the washing machine at the laundromat when I was backpacking. It was only $10 at a second-hand store but I rocked that yellow dress. I feel ya. Hate losing clothes I actually enjoy wearing. My abusive ex. I also choose this person's ex. One time I filled a frappuccino up too full. It leaked a little bit from the lid.
the customer in drive through saw that, and commented on how it was spilling everywhere. So I wiped it off fully and double cupped it. I handed it to them, and they said it was still dripping. I handed some napkins and offered to remake it explaining that it was just too full so once they took a couple sips it should be good. She declined and said they were late for work so she sped off. As one of the only men at my location, my voice is quite distinguishable from the others in drive through Every single time since that, when I have taken her order, she asks for her caramel walls inside the cup. She only asks this when I am the one to take her order. This happened about a year ago and she still says the same thing every single time I take her order. Dot. So yeah she can fuck off. I'd fill her cup halfway, at most, regardless of size if she pulled that shit more than once, but that's why I can't work food service. The person who keeps talking to the cashier in the shop while there is a big line built up. People can just be oblivious. Sometimes cashiers will do this, too. I stop at a 7-Eleven on the way to work most days, and the owner is sometimes the only person working. He'll always strike up a conversation and it just goes on way too long. I'll literally back away to the point where I'm standing at the exit with the door half open, and he's still going. 17, thanks, have a nice day, s later and I might get out. He's a nice guy or whatever, but dude, I gotta get to work. TLDR my mother-in-law and father-in-law were horribly abusive to my sister-in-law, and she is a wonderful person who deserves better. Dot. How about two people? My mother-in-law and father-in-law. My sister-in-law has horrible PTSD from the way she was treated growing up. She was singled out because she was the result of the mom sleeping around, and then the fundamentalist Christian dad forgiving mom, and insisting she not have an abortion. He would, raise it like his own. Well, he kind of did. He was abusive to the rest of the kids too. She was just treated worse, and for longer. The mother-in-law has told her to kill herself too many times to count, including on her 16th birthday. In 2020, when she was pregnant and homeless, and then homeless and having a miscarriage, neither of her parents would allow her to stay with them. She had to miscarry her baby, alone, in her car. They both knew what was going on, and chose not to help. This person is one of the sweetest, kindest, most loving, helpful people I've ever met. This is just the tip of the iceberg of trauma that she has gone through because of these two. So, mom and dad can absolutely, fuck right off. There is a long list of others that I'd like to tell to kindly fuck off on her behalf as well, just for good measure, but they're a good start. And if you see this, K, I love you so much and I'm so proud of you. And I really hope you don't mind me sharing this. This is a throwaway, and I'd love it if others knew about how horribly you've been treated and how strong you are for coming out on the other side of it. You are someone I honestly look up to. Heart. Tell Kay I love her, too. This internet stranger thinks you're a strong badass bitch. Joel Austin. Fuck him and his entire jackass. Tax avoiding, false profit empire. Edit. I apologize. I didn't know that using cocksucking wasn't cool or okay. Still, fuck Joel Austin. Fuck Kenneth Copeland, while we're at it. My dad's third wife. He died and she didn't let my sister or I know. She wanted to make sure we got nothing from his estate. We didn't want anything and let our dad know that multiple times. She won't even send me pics of my grandmother and other family pics to us. Edit. Thank you all for the upvotes, comments and I am sad to know so many others have suffered the same story. I am also overwhelmed by the upvotes, as I am used to one or two upvotes on any of my comments. I have been reading everyone's stories and my thoughts go out to you all. I didn't fight the will as it would have been expensive across state lines and the amount of time, money and travel would have been difficult. Dot. Again, thank you all. My stepmom did the same. Sued me, the oldest child, at 17 for his social security. Casey Anthony. Everyone just knows she killed her daughter. Usually with cases like this, there's always a group that will defend the person. Not her. 
literally no one defends her and everyone knows she's a piece of shit. My verbally and mentally abusive aunt. I pity her children. I'm praying her youngest will turn out fine. I always feel bad for kids with awful parents. Hopefully they can realize she's not a good person. That fucking Karen in the Reddit video who was hosing away a little girl's chalk drawing on the street as she's sitting there crying her eyes out. Whoever you are lady. Fuck you. I remember when I was a little kid and just learned how to write. I proudly wrote my name with chalk really big on the street. Not even 30 minutes later the neighbor took a hose and broom to wash it away. WTF was her problem. My principal who told me to stop playing the victim after I got stabbed by my classmate when the teacher left for the restroom. I had someone randomly sneak up behind me and, playfully, hold a pocket knife to my throat in a high school class once. I wasn't friends with this guy, and he annoyed a lot of us in class daily with his attention-seeking antics. I grabbed his arm and jumped up to make a big deal out of it. My buddy was also about to fight the kid until the teacher yelled at my buddy and I sounding pretty distressed. I told her what happened, and she told me I was overreacting. She made us sit back down, and I left the class a few minutes later to drive home. Since those days, the guy that did this has gotten in trouble with the law a little. I know he's a registered sex offender now. I'm just not sure what exactly he's done. Not as intense as yours, but yours reminded me of this. Glad to know you're, presumably, okay after that happening to you. What a complete failure by the principal to not take any action in that situation. Okay, this is a personal one for me. A couple of nights ago I had to quickly leave town and drive seven hours to where my mom lives as she had to go to the emergency room. By the time I got to town she had been admitted to the ICU step-down unit. After sitting by her side for a few hours, crying with family and trying to collect ourselves, my sister and I decided to get a couple of hours sleep while my stepdad spent the night with her. We were essentially going to come back in about four hours. On the way back to my hotel I decided to get food because I hadn't eaten in about a day. I still wasn't hungry but knew I had to try and eat. It was almost midnight so my options were limited. I saw a Whataburger so I went there. I pull up and there's a car ordering in front of me. I can't really hear what she's saying, but I can hear the speaker clearly. Essentially I hear, again ma'am, this is a Whataburger not a McDonald's. Ma'am we don't have anything called a Big Mac here, ma'am please look at the menu and select from that. This went on for like 10 to 15 minutes. Finally her order total was only $3.86. No idea what she ordered. Then she pulls forward. Now at this point I order and then pull up behind her at the window. I have no clue what happens at this point because I can't really hear them talk well enough to point it out. But I can tell she essentially changes her whole order. It takes easily 15 to 20 minutes. I can tell the guy is super frustrated. She ends up getting a lot of food and a large drink handed to her. Finally she starts to drive off, but she only pulls up a little bit. Puts the car in park and starts eating her food right there. I'm now stuck behind her. Barely able to get to the window and pay. Get my food. I get my stuff but there's no way I can get out. I honk. She's just stuffing the food into her face. Finally an employee comes out and bangs on her window but she's just eating her food. I honk. People behind me honk. Dude is screaming at her from outside her window. I underscore finally underscore hear them saying they're calling the police. She pulls forward just enough for me to squeeze out and I give her a hard stare as I drive by. She was obviously incredibly drunk, or something. I have no idea what was up or if the police came. But the whole thing lost me nearly an hour of time for sleep. I ended up trying to eat my food in my car as I drove to the hotel just to save time. I ended up getting no sleep that night. Between the situation and being wound up by that it just didn't happen. Fuck that bitch. This guy shooting homeless people asleep on the sidewalks. Fuck that. I myself had similar experience. I was homeless and some fucker tried to set my tent on fire. 
I heard footsteps late at night and opened my tent saw the guy running away and there was a fire he lit with a pizza box and some newspaper that he set on my shopping cart which was touching my tent and I kicked it away as it was about to engulf my tent. Pretty sure it was the same guy who was throwing rocks at homeless people in that area because I was talking about it with other homeless people I met in that area. Interesting times indeed. I'm not ashamed of being homeless I learned a lot during that time. Plus I made some friends in my fellow homeless people. I looked out for everyone I had a couple food hookups from some really nice Italian restaurant owners and got all kinds of stuff at the end of the night and would walk around to give food out to my fellow homeless friends. It blows my mind that people would try to harm homeless people. Someone like that is really sick in the mind. The guy that drugged me at a bar in 2018. Drove me to his apartment. Raped me. Then called two of his friends to come over and rape me as well. Yeah. He can fuck right off and die. Edit. Update. Was not expecting anyone to see this or interact. Thanks to everyone for the kind and supportive comments. They are truly appreciated. To answer a couple questions. I am doing well now. Lots of therapy. A trip to the psych ward. And some amazing medication and I'm definitely feeling like myself again. And I have a wonderful support system. I did report the incident to the police and had a rape kit done. But unfortunately they did nothing to help me and my case was dropped almost immediately. That's been the hardest part. Because I'm sure they've done this to someone else by now and that absolutely kills me. But I'm a believer in karma and they will get what's coming to them someday. To anyone else who's gone through something similar. I am so deeply sorry. I know the pain feels unbearable some days and I wish I could give you a giant hug. Stay strong everybody. And be a good person heart. His two friends can go fuck themselves, too. I mean. If a friend of mine called me and said yo wanna rape this girl I've got at my house? I'd call the fucking police, not join him. Jake Paul. And Logan Paul while we're at it. My stalker. Bradley can just fuck off. Dot. Met him on a dating app for big guys and chasers. And he PM me unsolicited dick pics. I blocked him. Can he made a second account to try to get what he wanted out of me and sent more unsolicited dick pics. He found me on Facebook a few months later so I blocked him there. I haven't seen any signs of him for two years till yesterday when he found my secondary TikTok account so I have blocked him on both accounts. Whoa I just saw FB friend getting stalked by a guy named Brad from PoF. When she didn't respond to his messages fast enough, he became aggressive and demanding and then started insulting her. He then made two more accounts under the names Kevin and Dylan. Kevin was an asshat almost immediately and Dylan pretended to be totally a different person for a while before referencing her not responding to his messages. It was horrible to see everything he said. I only bring this up because he started with the name Brad and sort of followed the same pattern. Also I am so sorry this happened to you and that he won't leave you alone sad face. Clive Palmer and Craig Kelly, Scott Morrison, Peter Dutton the list goes on. Just hurry up and call the damn election. DJ Khaled, that giant douche. Probably yells his own name during sex. Big Pharma and insurance CEOs. How is this one not near the top spot? People responsible for that scale of avoidable death are fantastic candidates for fucking off.